Welcome to today's news talk at the International News Channel. I'm Hazar Alsaba. Jewish groups have been calling for a summit to address anti-Semitism for the last few months, citing an increase in anti-Semitism in Canada following the conflicts in Israel-Palestine. As a result, some Jewish groups remain hopeful that the national summit will be an important stepping stone towards developing policy to combat anti-Semitism in Canada. Joining us today to discuss the National Summit on Anti-Semitism is Michael Motson, the CEO of B'nai B'rith Canada. Thanks for coming in today, Michael. In your opinion, what events led to this National Summit on Anti-Semitism? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think it was a long time coming. Uh, we've seen a growth in anti-Semitism both globally and within Canada for a number of years. And, uh, but really, I think, what pushed it was this past month of May when we saw the conflict between Hamas and Israel uh, and uh, the violence that emanated from that in cities across the country. We had 61 acts of violence, unfortunately, against the Jewish community uh, during the month of May alone, which was a real explosion. And a lot of people were asking why, how can this happen in our Canada? There were cars, uh, driving through Jewish neighborhoods asking where the Jews are. It, that was a shock. That was an absolute shock to members of the Jewish community. And uh, so so this summit was called. And, um, and, and hopefully there will be some positive outcomes from that. Mm -hmm. And more generally, why is the National Summit on anti-Semitism needed, do you think? Well, I, I think it was needed as a way uh, for government uh, at different levels of government to come together and understand that now is a time that we need to deal with the issue of hate more generally in Canada. Um, uh, I think that we know when there's a problem. We know in the facts and the data and uh, police hate crime reports have shown for years that anti-Semitism, this particular manifestation of hate against uh, the Jewish community, is a real problem. Uh, so we need a point where we can come together and say, okay, what are we going to do about it? What's the action plan? That's something that B'nai B'rith is really, uh, you know, pushing on on this one, that there has to be tangible results. The summit itself can't be an end in and of itself, it can't be a listening exercise. We need some results and we need some leadership from our government. Mm -hmm. And what was your reaction to the National Summit on Anti-Semitism? Uh, well, I, I thought it was um, uh, important that you had so many members of cabinet and, and the prime minister there. Um, um, you know, there were there were many members of, of the Jewish community uh, who were speaking from different institu uh, institutions and as as individuals. Um, all important. Um, but again, at the end of the day, being an action based organization at B'nai B'rith, um, it's it's really all about uh, the results. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, what are the outcomes going to be? There were many proposals that were put forward uh, to the government. Uh, there were some outcomes uh, day of, but um, across the board, uh, the Jewish community wants to feel uh, as though uh, our government uh, has a plan to move forward. Is that pushing forward a national action plan under the leadership of, of Erwin Cutler, who is our envoy uh, for anti-Semitism in this country. Um, Canada should be a leader in, in the fight against hate. And, and now is the time to show that to the world. Mm -hmm. And from your observations, what were some of the success and some of the failures of the National Summit on anti-Semitism? Well, we would have liked to see it more open, uh, quite honestly. I mean, um, um, Anti-Semitism and all forms of racism um, should not be a partisan issue. So, um, you know, and, and, and we know that there's, you know, support against uh, against racism uh, across the board, across uh, all political parties. We, you know, we'd like to see more of that and and more coverage of this issue. Uh, Anti-Semitism, and I know we're, we're talking about this here today, but um, it just doesn't seem to get the same amount of coverage as uh, some other manifestations of hate in this country. Uh, so, um, you know, that's something we'd like to see. Something else, I mean, which is interesting because there was, of course, um, another uh, summit about uh, Islamophobia the following day. Um, hate is hate at the end of the day. And 
I, I think that it's a moment for reflection for all levels of government uh, and for our police, um, for, for uh, the judiciary. Um, how do we deal with hate more broadly? How do we make sure that a Canadian is a Canadian and that there will be consequences for hate mongers in our society, regardless of where it's coming from. Sometimes it's uh, an uncomfortable conversation, um, depending where manifestations of hate come from. It shouldn't be, it should never be political. And and there should be equal consequences uh, and, and no tolerance for the intolerant. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that in addition to the National Summit on Anti-Semitism, the Canadian government also held a National Summit on Islamophobia. What are your thoughts on this? I, I think that the government should be concerned, again, with, with any form of hate against any identifiable group. Um, Muslims also face um, um, discrimination in our country, uh, as do Jews, um, as do Asians, as do um, uh, the people whose uh, skin color is, is black or is brown, um, uh, different religions. There are there are many of us um, who unfortunately uh, are, are sometimes uh, victimized um, because of who we are. And that's not acceptable. Um, uh, the government should be showing overall that um, that it's concerned with with all of this. What, what are the common ways? in the structure of government that we have here, in, in uh, the structure of our judicial system, that we can ensure that there's consequences against those that target any of us. Um, and so a certain degree of compartmentalization is important because we need to understand each manifestation of hate, but at the same time, what are the more overarching generalities to ensure that all of us are protected in, within a society and that we have fairness and complete equality under the law. So that's that's something that, uh, that, that we would like to see a little bit more of. How do we make sure and that there's real teeth uh, in the system for hate mongers, regardless of, of where they come from? The extreme right, extreme left should make a difference. You mentioned a rise on anti-Semitism, particularly in the month of May. Do you think that anti-Semitism is entrenched in Canadian society today? Well, that's a that's a tough question, entrenched. Um, um, I, I think that anti-Semitism goes through phases. Uh, in earlier in Canadian history, uh, the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s, there were discriminatory rules in place in Canada. Uh, Jews couldn't buy property. Um, it was actually in the land lease. You couldn't sell to a Jew. Uh, there were signs, no Jews or dogs allowed on the beach in, in the 50s and 60s. Um, at some of those restrictive covenants for, for the sale of land went into the 1980s. Um, in universities, there were quotas against Jews in various programs. So, you know, that's pretty much, you know, in your face anti-Semitism. Then we, we got into more of a, of a golden age in, in, in this country and, and um, you know, many Jews uh, within the community found success through workarounds. Uh, if, if you're not gonna hire me into a, uh, a law firm where no Jews are allowed, we're gonna set up our own law firm and, uh, and go about it in that way. And that's part of the, the history of, of success um, of our community in our country, although there's a lot of poverty in our community just, just as there is in any other. Uh, but We've seen, unfortunately, this resurgence, and it's the anti-Semitism that's, that's here in Canada now today, it's from a different place. And um, of course, there's still white supremacist, neo-Nazi anti-Semitism. What we saw in the month of May, that's not where it was coming from. It came from an anti-Israel extremism. And sure, there were issues going on in the Middle East, and there's conflict in the Middle East, but it shouldn't matter where in the world there might be conflict, and it shouldn't matter that Canadians have differing opinions on different political conflicts in different parts of the world. It should always be unacceptable for violence and for harassment of individuals because they think or they know that you may have a different uh, political opinion um, than another. And and that's where this came from. This anti-Semitism was, um, you know, from, from a place of anti-Zionism. And, uh, and anti-Zionism can sometimes be, anti-Israel sentiment can sometimes be anti-Semitic. That's what we saw. That's different than anti-Semitism issues um, 
um, that we've seen in Canada in the past, the time of none is too many in terms of immigration policy in Canada. And that's not something that everybody has wrapped their head around on how to deal with, but it needs to be because when it comes to anti-Semitism, it, it all must be dealt with uh, in a uniform way, which is why our community pushes so strongly for the IRA definition of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this summit will catalyze actual policy changes finally? I hope so, really hope so. Uh, because if it doesn't, then, um, you know, what's the point? Uh, the, the, the point of the, the summit should not be a listening exercise. The point of this summit should be a crystallization uh, into action items that we can push forward um, that can deal directly with anti-Semitism, both online, in the online space. Hate is unfortunately propagating through social media. It needs to be dealt with um, in a more general sense as well, in, in addition to the, the anti-Semitism coming out from there and, and in the physical world as well. So I think at the end of the day, the legacy of the summit will be judged on the outcomes. And, um, and we'll have to see how a federal election plays into that as well, because uh, if we do have an election, hopefully whatever party wins uh, will continue on and, and we'll, uh, we'll deal with the, these issues of anti-Semitism and, and push forward for um, something that's within the control of the federal government and working with its provincial partners and, and hate crime units, make sure that there's uh, trained hate crime officers to deal with, with anti-Semitism and other forms of, of hatred, um, because if not, we haven't really moved forward. Right. Thank you so much for joining us again, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to our viewers for joining us. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Hazar Alsaba. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos.